I need to um, restate the edge of the glasses because they have to be moved down again. And I had put them originally way up here, and you can see, of course, that won't work out. Pulling in here, I made it all smaller here, so now I have to give more width here in order to correct that drawing. Correcting, correcting. If you'll recall, I had to diminish all of this a bit. That means I have to move this in also. There's a little piece of hair there that I can see, just a little piece, will help define the edge of the head. With this tiny sable, I'm going to squint my eyes down and just gently describe maybe a little bit of the white of the eye. I keep wanting to get in there and do that. People just want to do that so much, and I'm, I, I also find that just so tempting. But in this case, it's not really about this sparkling eye thing. Sometimes it is. You may see my work where sometimes that's true. But in this case, we're in a deep shadow here. Now I'm taking a hard charcoal, sharpened hard char charcoal here. It's very dense. It makes a very dark mark. And let me warn you, you had better be confident when you make this mark because it really won't lift very well. And all I'm doing is squinting down, trying to just get a sense of the edge there of the eyelid. I just am going to indicate that a bit. I really don't want to get into I want this to stay sketchy. I don't want to get too detailed in here. I really don't think that's what it's about. I'm just trying to place that indication. And in fact, even now, I think it's a bit too detailed. I want this to stay very dark and there's a word called sfumato. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it literally means smoke in Italian. I want this to stay smoky and hazy and mysterious and sort of dreamlike. Okay, I really want to get in here and do just a little bit of detail work with this, with this heavy, dense, charcoal, sharpened stick right here. And here in the mouth, Now, I see lots of issues here that can be corrected or changed, and definitely you could go on and on, you know, fooling around with this until it, it looked a lot more like the model. I see a lot of problems here in terms of bone structure that I could come along and correct. It would take me a little while, but I wanted you to see how I go about approaching changes. That's what this is really all about, are these steps that you take to make the changes. Now I'm going along this edge here because I really like the line of the jaw. And I'm hoping I can get to it if I come up a little bit here, squinting those eyes down again, trying to draw what I really see and not what I think I see. That's the key. Mm, it's a little better. I think this transition, this turn could be less noticeable. And I think the ear, I don't want anything back there to be as bright as anything that comes very forward. And in order to make the highlights more noticeable, I'm going to kind of drag this charcoal around just so lightly, all those areas where I made all those changes because eventually, at the very last moment, I'll do all that magic stuff, I hope, that will make all the fun changes and the pop happen. There's a little line here I want that turn. It's very noticeable. I want to indicate, I've got to put my hand down here, and sometimes you can use a moss stick. I don't happen to have one, so I'll rest my hand like so. Fingernail there, it makes a little mark, but I can fix that later. I'm squinting down and I have a little edge here that a little line that can go in here more noticeable edge to the nostril here as well this is a tricky area here and I want to describe the lips 
coming up, that shape. Because he has really noticeable, nice lips. This cachet. Being down the mouth. This, these are the sorts of things that get to the likeness. But I'm still trying to discipline myself into seeing the shapes. These are the kinds of things you don't really have a chance to, to teach yourself to do if you're just working from photos. So I do encourage you to do this work from life. It's the real deal. This is quite dark here. This is all dark. This is quite dark. This is fairly dark here. Go make this. And I want to get those glasses in. Okay. Make a brave mark here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Set those glasses down. I'm going to use this eraser to do the highlights again to replace the marks I'd made earlier that had to be moved. There's one here. You may remember there was a pretty one here. Very nice. I love these eraser pencils. It's fun. There's a little edge of the glasses right here. Just a little mark will do. It doesn't have to be perfect, just to indicate it. And then right top of those glasses right here that fall below, actually, the brow. Come around. A little highlight there. I'm going to clean my eraser off. It's a little bit dirty. And then with that clean eraser, I'll go down through here. Now this paper isn't actually white. And what's commonly done is to add some little white highlights with a white conte or a white, some people say white charcoal, which is crazy talk. <laughs> so there is not white charcoal, but a white conte will work. And you can put your highlights in or not, it's up to you with that. I have a kneaded eraser, still getting some of those highlights there, and across the bridge. Need to repair some of these edges. And then taking, once again, my finger, supporting this, I'll put in a couple of brave marks. Let's see how brave I can make them. I'll go ahead and make them so brave that they're with the charcoal pencil. Supporting here, it's just a quick little mark coming down. Another one here. Now I'm having fun. The whole purpose of this portrait to do these glasses. All about the glasses. And here is where I'm finally doing the actual linear work. And here, in the last few minutes, or the last few seconds, I might come in and just swing out that jaw, make him a little stronger, a little broader jaw. This is an edge, edging the drawing. Losing the edge, pushing the edge. You can do this to your heart's desire. And then finally, using a stump. 
just to go in and indicate the very slightest, very slightest little highlight here. Not much. And then the hood of the eye just a bit. And so on. This is the way that we would push it along. But I think that you can see the opportunities that you have to do all sorts of expressive, fun things. This is the point we want to get it to so that you can take it on from here and really tighten up and do that likeness just the way you would like it. For a likeness, you must be willing to redraw. Make as many changes as necessary, but above all, be brave. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.